Welcome to Deep Universe Updates. Subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. August 12, 2025. It began as a day like any other, routine, unremarkable, until a headline flashed across every screen on the planet. The words were simple but their meaning was seismic, we are not alone. The James Webb Space Telescope had confirmed biological signatures on the distant exoplanet Kepler 186 FF. In an instant, the ordinary became extraordinary, and the world was forever changed. The world froze. For a heartbeat, humanity held its breath, suspended between disbelief and wonder. People everywhere stopped what they were doing, drawn together by a single, electrifying moment. This wasn't speculation or rumor, it was hard data, chemistry, not conjecture. The evidence was undeniable, written in the language of molecules and light, decoded by the most advanced instruments ever built. In mission control rooms across the globe, scientists stared at their screens in disbelief and joy. Some cheered, others wept, all aware they were witnessing history unfold in real time. Years of tireless work, a $10 billion telescope and now, a message from 500 light years away. We are here. The universe had finally answered back. The universe suddenly felt less empty, its vastness no longer a silent void but a place filled with new possibilities and distant neighbors. The news spread in whispers, then in a roar. Social media exploded with speculation and excitement, as people everywhere tried to grasp the enormity of what had just happened. By midday, every network had dropped its regular programming. The world's attention was united, focused on a single, breathtaking revelation. This was more than science. It was about who we are, and what it means to be human. It was a moment that transcended borders, beliefs, and backgrounds. For the first time we had an answer to the age-old question, are we alone? Generations of wonder and curiosity had led to this singular moment. We looked up at the night sky and saw it anew, not just as a scattering of stars but as a map of possible homes for others, a tapestry of potential life. The implications rippled through every part of society. Governments convened emergency meetings, religious leaders prepared statements searching for meaning in this cosmic revelation, strangers talked in the streets, united by awe and a sense of shared destiny. For a moment humanity felt smaller and larger all at once. The discovery didn't come with a spaceship or a radio signal, but with light, ancient photons parsed by a machine a million miles from Earth, revealing secrets hidden for eons. The most important discovery in human history arrived quietly, in the subtle dance of molecules in a distant atmosphere. The universe had spoken, not in words, but in the language of science. And this time, we listened. Everything had changed. The dawn of a new era had begun, and humanity would never see itself or the cosmos the same way again. To understand this extraordinary discovery we must first meet the messenger behind it all. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. This marvel of engineering is humanity's most ambitious space observatory, designed to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. More than just a telescope, JWST is a true time machine, capturing ancient light that began its journey across the universe hundreds, thousands, even billions of years ago. Every photon it collects is a message from the distant past, allowing us to peer back in time and witness the universe as it once was. Webb peers deep into the birthplaces of stars and planets, revealing the hidden processes that shape galaxies. Crucially, it also sniffs the atmospheres of distant worlds, searching for the chemical fingerprints of life and habitability far beyond our solar system. Launched in 2021 after decades of planning and international collaboration, JWST is the successor to the legendary Hubble Space Telescope. But it's far more powerful, seeing the universe in invisible infrared light, which lets it peer through cosmic dust and unveil secrets Hubble could never reach. Its enormous 21-foot gold-coated mirror, made of 18 hexagonal segments, gathers faint light from the farthest reaches of space. The tennis court-sized sunshield keeps the telescope cold and sensitive, allowing it to detect the faintest signals, all while stationed a million miles from Earth at the second Lagrange point. This unique vantage point gives Webb a clear, stable, and uninterrupted view of the cosmos, free from the interference of Earth's atmosphere and heat. It orbits the Sun in tandem with Earth, always shielded from our star's glare by its massive sun shield, ensuring its instruments remain at the perfect temperature for sensitive observations. From this cosmic outpost Webb turned its gaze toward a faint red star in the constellation Cygnus, capturing ancient starlight that would soon change our understanding of the universe forever. JWST was built to answer humanity's biggest questions about our origins, our place in the cosmos, and the possibility of life elsewhere. 
on that historic day, it delivered the biggest answer of all. The universe had sent a message across unimaginable distances and epochs, and Webb was finally ready to receive it, decoding secrets written in the faintest glimmers of light. Our search for life and understanding had a new champion, one that would push the boundaries of discovery further than ever before. And with this achievement, the James Webb Space Telescope had just made history, opening a new era of cosmic exploration for all humankind. How does a telescope smell the air of a planet 500 light years away? The answer transit spectroscopy. When a planet like Kepler 186f passes in front of its star, it dims the starlight. A transit. Webb goes further, analyzing the starlight that filters through the planet's atmosphere during the transit. Molecules in the air absorb specific wavelengths, leaving a unique barcode in the light. Webb's instruments, especially NIAR spec, spread this light into a spectrum, revealing the missing colors. Many molecules crucial for life, water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, show their strongest signals in infrared, invisible from Earth's surface. By stacking data from many transits, scientists reconstruct the chemical makeup of a distant world's air. The process is painstaking, but Webb's massive mirror and cold instruments make it possible. This is how we read the atmospheric story of Kepler 186f, and how we found the first signs of life beyond Earth. Kepler 186f wasn't chosen at random. Among the thousands of exoplanets discovered, this one stood out for a reason. Since its discovery in 2014, it's been a top candidate for habitability, capturing the imagination of scientists and the public alike. Located about 500 light years away, Kepler 186f orbits a red dwarf star, smaller, cooler, and much dimmer than our own sun, making its environment truly unique. To stay warm, Kepler 186f huddles close to its star, completing an orbit every 130 days, yet it sits perfectly in the habitable zone, the so-called Goldilocks region, where conditions might just be right for liquid water to exist on its surface. It's only about 10% larger than Earth and likely rocky, not a gas giant. This makes it one of the most Earth-like exoplanets ever found, at least in terms of size and composition. But life there would be very different. Under a dim red sun, days would look like endless sunset, with skies painted in deep oranges and reds, casting an otherworldly glow across the landscape. Could photosynthesis adapt to this strange red-tinted light? Would alien plants evolve to thrive under such a sun? The discovery of its atmosphere suggests the answer could be yes. Detecting an atmosphere is a crucial step in the search for life. Before the James Webb Space Telescope, we knew its size and orbit, but not if it had air, or what kind of air it might have. It could have been a barren rock or shrouded in thick crushing clouds, hostile to life as we know it. That's why scientists prioritized Kepler 186f for Webb, hoping for even the faintest hint of habitability, something to suggest it could support life. What they found was far more than expected, a living world's breath, the subtle signatures of a dynamic, possibly life-supporting atmosphere. Kepler 186f quickly became our most promising cosmic cousin, a beacon in the search for life beyond Earth. The search for life had a new focal point, and for the first time the universe seemed to answer back, whispering possibilities from across the stars. When Webb's first clear spectrum of Kepler 186f's atmosphere arrived, the team saw what they'd hoped for, and more. Water vapor confirmed, carbon dioxide present, both are key for habitability. This alone was historic, direct evidence of water on an Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone. But then, two more signals emerged methane and oxygen. Methane can come from volcanoes, but on Earth, it's often biological. Oxygen is highly reactive. It doesn't linger unless something replenishes it. On Earth, that's life, photosynthesis. Finding both together was the holy grail. The data pointed not just to a habitable world, but a living one. Oxygen and methane are chemical opposites. They destroy each other quickly. Their stable coexistence in an atmosphere is a sign of disequilibrium, a planetary tug of war. On a dead world, gases settle into balance. On a living world, something keeps pumping both into the air. On Earth that's life plants make oxygen, microbes make methane and the balance persists. This disequilibrium is a planetary fingerprint of biology. When Webb found both gases on Kepler 186f, it was a eureka moment. Water and carbon dioxide meant habitability. Oxygen and methane together meant something more, a biosphere. Not just a world that could support life, but one that does, the strongest evidence for extraterrestrial life we've ever found. The universe had revealed a living world. 
Before making history scientists tried to prove themselves wrong. Could volcanoes or strange chemistry explain the oxygen-methane mix? They tested every scenario. Volcanism produces methane but not free oxygen. The models didn't fit. Photochemistry? Red dwarfs don't emit enough UV to split water and leave oxygen behind, and that wouldn't explain methane. They simulated comet impacts, exotic atmospheres, and more. Each time the data resisted a non-biological explanation. No known geology or chemistry could create both gases in such abundance. The only explanation left life. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and this was it. The simplest answer was a biosphere. Kepler 186F was alive. With every alternative ruled out, scientists made it official. Kepler 186F's atmosphere is best explained by a global biosphere. Not little green men, but a living planet, its air shaped by biology just like Earth. The key was disequilibrium, a dynamic, ever-changing atmosphere, the breath of a living world. This shifted life from a local miracle to a cosmic phenomenon. Life, it seemed, was a natural outcome of the right conditions. Webb found no signs of technology, no artificial pollutants, no techno-signatures. Kepler 186F is wild, pre-industrial, a cosmic nature preserve. Imagine alien forests under a red sun, or oceans teeming with unknown life. Life may be common, technology, rare. Kepler 186F is not a world of cities but a garden, a living world untouched by civilization, and we had just discovered it. The confirmation of life on Kepler 186F changed everything, we are not alone. Earth is not unique, the loneliness of the cosmos is broken, a new era of exploration begins. The search for life is now a concrete scientific quest. If life thrives around a red dwarf, it could be everywhere. The question is no longer if, but where else. Scientists are already targeting other worlds, like the TRAPPIST-1 system, for Webb and future telescopes. We'll compare living worlds, study their atmospheres, and learn how life evolves across the galaxy. Is oxygen-methane disequilibrium universal, or are stranger biospheres waiting? We've opened a new field comparative astrobiology. Our galaxy holds billions of stars. How many more living worlds await? The ancient question is answered, but a thousand new ones arise. The journey has just begun. The cosmos awaits.